Okay, today I want to talk about building an aileron in place on the wing um, to ensure proper alignment at the center line of the spar is where it should be. Um, this particular project that I'm working on is a Steen Skybolt. The Skybolt has uh, tapered ailerons out towards the tip of the wing where the spars taper to meet the wing tip bows. So I know some people are fans of building the aileron on a flat table and if it were a flat bottom aileron all the way across with no taper that'd be fine. Uh, I suppose there's ways of doing it on a tabletop but again um, you have to make sure that the tabletop is absolutely flat otherwise you're going to end up with ribs that are not in perfect alignment and that's what happened with this project the uh, ailerons for the lower wing panels were started at the time that I got the project and when you sighted down a trailing edge of the aileron it was very apparent that the uh, rib ends were not all in a level plane so when I did the top wing I built those ailerons in place as well and it worked out very well and today I want to kind of give you an overview of that process um, and how it comes together actually very simply and the ailerons are in the alignment that they're supposed to be. Now I've already gone ahead and taken a couple of the first steps um, in this assembly process of the ailerons but we'll just go over quickly what I've done. You want to mark the center line or the cord line of the ribs that make up the aileron well, the ribs that are attached to the wing. And of course mark your center line of your spar down the length of the aileron well and I know it's kinda hard to see in this light but you also want to make sure that your center line is marked on the outboard rib that makes up the aileron well um, and what we're going to do then is level a wing panel with the use of a laser level so that I know that it's nice and level and I know I have a good level reference for building the aileron itself. Now on the Steen Skybolt, the aileron gaps on the outside edges is shown as one and half of an inch on the plans and that's what I'm building it at. If I want to tighten them up later I can do so by laminating um, some mahogany plywood on the ends of the ailerons, no big deal but plans call for one half inch and that's the way that I'm going to build it. Now what you can see here is that I have tacked a couple of one half inch thick stock pieces here what I'm going to end up doing is clamping the end ribs to the aileron up against that then I know that I'm going to have a one half inch gap. I've done that on the inboard side as well. Three or four little drops of super glue um, hold those in place real nice. I just uh, use the thicker stuff. It's a little slow to set up and cure so I clamp them in position, just random position there and um, kicked it off with a heat gun to get it to cure fast. So that part's already done. Um, and again, center lines are drawn on uh, the wing spars and the ribs that make up the well opening. Now I have also gone ahead and drawn the cord lines uh, on the aileron ribs on um, both sides end rib, end rib, and the interior ribs. Now I might occasionally refer to this as the center line but it's not really truly the physical center line of the aileron rib. It's the cord line of the wing because of the way that the aileron is shaped um, and it's shown on the plans that way. 
that's what I want to mark because that's where it runs through the center of the uh, centers up on the aileron spar and then I know everything is in proper orientation as far as the cord line goes and I've also gone ahead and marked the center line of the main spar and the aileron right down the exact middle on both sides now on the sky bolt notice that this rib has a cutout here the spar is going to plug into this it's a quarter inch thick rib keep that in mind when you're cutting the spar length but this spar plugs into this rib which is the interior side of the aileron and the spar rests up against it butts up against the tip rib for the aileron I've also taken and just tacked on here with a small spot of super glue a little shelf and you'll see why here shortly all it does is support the aileron spar out at the outboard side of the aileron while the epoxy is going to be curing now what I've done is I have set up uh, my laser level on a spare tripod just a few feet back from the area where I'm going to be working and once it's in position there I don't want to move it um, I mean if you have to you're going to have to realign it but what I then did was I shimmed the wing on the sawhorses so that my laser line which might little, look a little funky here in the video because it's uh, because it's a red line so now that line falls down the center of the spar and it's all level okay this shot is uh, with some of the lighting off in the work area here and you can see how my laser line falls down the center of everything hopefully it'll stay in focus here as we go so it falls right at the end of that rib there which makes up the inboard part of the well and then as we move out here you can see that it falls right down the center of the wingtip bow outboard so now I know my wing is level in relation to the laser what I'm going to do next is go ahead and set my interior rib here up against my stock shim and I'm just going to position it here now I have gone ahead and pre-fitted this so I have a couple of alignment marks here as far as distance back because there's 3 and 15 sixteenths inches between the face of the rear spar and the face of the aileron spar on this wing as called out for in the plans. So I'm going to go ahead and align my cord line on the aileron rib with the laser mark. And then I'm going to clamp it in place here with my clamps being out of the way of where my aileron spar is going to be. Grab a ruler here. And I'll just take a quick measure. Now because I have a quarter inch plywood doubler plate in this area, I need to subtract 4 sixteenths from my measurement. So I'm looking at 3 and 11 sixteenths inches between the face of the doubler plate and the opening for my spar. And we're right on the money there. And as you can see, the laser falls right across the tip of this rib. So I'm good as far as that alignment right there. Now we'll do that for the end rib. The 
So now my tip rib for the aileron. Again, I've made a couple of marks so I know, just to speed this up for demonstration purposes, where the rib should be sitting. Take a measurement here. And again, three and fifteen sixteenths inches because there's no double plate here on this outboard portion of the other end well. And that's right where I'm at. Okay, now I've checked the fit of these ribs on the aileron spar here prior to uh, getting this going. There is a little bit of wiggle room here as far as the ribs on the spar. But the main thing that I want to ensure is that the cord line on the aileron ribs will line up with the center line of the spar. Have just a little wiggle room so that I can adjust the angle that the rib sits on the spar. So I've slid my interior ribs on now because once you glue this spar into the end ribs you are not going to be able to get the ribs onto there so you want to make sure you get them on there first. I'll go ahead and plug my spar in. And then I can butt it up against this end rib and that little shelf that I tacked onto this end rib does a nice job of holding the aileron spar in its place. Okay, and here you see, this is what I have going right now. I have my end ribs for the ailerons clamped into the position. They're in perfect alignment with the laser level as far as the cord line uh, of the wing as it runs through the aileron. I have my interior ribs slid into place and the opposite end there and the laser falls right across the center line of that aileron spar. So now we are ready to go ahead and glue that spar. Um, I've double checked the measurement between the face of the spars. It falls right at and 15 16 inches. Make sure that your spar is perpendicular and within the lines that you marked on that end. If it wants to rock back a little bit, we can tweak this rib just a little bit. Now ready to go ahead and epoxy that spar into the end ribs using some T88 and we know that everything as far as the spar in the two end ribs is going to be in perfect alignment then. So we'll go ahead and set some T88 into those joints and we'll let that cure overnight. Okay, one last check. Oh, look at that T88 ooze. Uh, one last check before walking away and leaving this thing to cure and doing something else. Making sure that the laser still falls along the center line of my spar. 
on the end tips cuts exactly where it should so now all that's left to do is to allow this to cure
Yeah, I don't want it. 